Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like me to send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on fronosphoto.com, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, I'll send you that guide for free. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com, and this is a review of the Nikon 120 to 300 2.8 F, which means it's for the F mount. Now this, has always been the holy grail pinnacle of wanting lenses. This is like a dream lens, a mega zoom telephoto lens that's a straight through 2.8. And Nikon finally came out with one in 2020. Now I bring that up because Sigma, I have a review of a Sigma lens, a 120 to 300 2.8 from 11 years ago. I mean, look how good looking this guy is at Alan's camera. That's me. I'm here with the Sigma 120 to 300 OS. 11 years ago, talking about a 120 to 300 2.8 and Nikon only released one in 2020 at a time when DSLRs are dead and mirrorless is the present and future. Nonetheless, I always wanted to try this lens out, so I reached out to Nikon and said, hey, can I take this lens out? And they sent it to me. So I took it to the Philadelphia Phillies to photograph some baseball from the outside position, the inside position, to see what I was able to capture. Is 300 long enough? Is 120 wide enough? Is this a good sports lens? And I also took it out to a women's soccer match, which by the way, the women do not cry when they fall, men. You guys cry like little babies. Oh, I fell. I think I pulled an eyelid. My right eyelid is, a, oh, let me check it. Yeah, don't come at me. The women don't complain at all. They like get up and they're like, yeah, what up? And they like, thanks, and they got help. But whatever, you guys are little babies when it comes to soccer. So I took the Nikon Z9 with the F to Z adapter, which is over here on the Z6, so that I could adapt this F mount lens to this camera. Now we know from our experience using F lenses on the Z cameras that they don't exactly perform as seamlessly as the Canons do with the EF to RF adapter. It just seems that the Canon lenses adapt much better, a little more seamlessly, better focusing than the Nikon. But I'll just say this right off the bat, I think the focusing worked really well with this lens adapted to the Z9. I don't have any complaints from in, in that front at all. But let's look at this lens, because this is a behemoth of a lens. It weighs in at seven pounds, which is 3,250 grams for those people playing at home. It is a heavy lens. You are really not going to try to handhold this because when you're trying to do the zoom thing, you have a pretty long throw from 120 to 300. You can do it with your thumb, so that's pretty good. It's really easy to do that and throw it almost the entire way, which is nice to have, but this is a massive hunk of glass. It's something that I always dreamed of having. It's something I always wished I had. And then Nikon finally made it come true in an era when you're like, why are you making this for the DSLR and not revamping it all for the mirrorless camera? And the reason for that is probably they started developing this like a decade ago and also the cost to manufacture this. And I'll say, let's just say the cost right now, $9,500 for this lens. It's probably that expensive, partly because of uh, research and development and the fact that they probably aren't gonna make a lot of these because they probably aren't, aren't gonna sell that many of them. I've only seen one in the wild before and that was at the US Open a couple of years ago. So around the lens, you have the lens collar like always. What I don't like, that I do like that the Canons do is it clicks into place. So you know exactly what center is. You can always find the center for vertical and the center for horizontal. So that's nice to have, but you don't have it here. What makes this lens so unique is the 120 all the way up out to 300 and that it is a continuous 2.8 all the way through. Now, just a few seconds ago, I told you that it was 9,500 bucks. The Sigma one that has been out for over a decade, there's been a couple versions of that, for Canon and for uh, Nikon, that's 3,600 bucks right now you could buy it for, which means you can find older versions used. I was never a big fan of that lens. I always found it to be slightly soft, but people that shot a lot of high school sports absolutely loved that, that lens because they could shoot almost everything 
football, soccer, baseball, and get a ton of great photos. And it was a heck of a lot more affordable than having just a 302.8 because you could zoom with it. All right, let's jump into some sample images. There's not really much to talk about on the outside of this lens at all, but sample images went out to the Phillies game because that is a great place to test out this lens. It's a sports first lens. You could use it for portraits if you really wanted. You could use it for weddings. You can use it for whatever you want to use it for, but it's a sports photographer's lens in my book. And that's why we went out to the Phillies. Having the versatility for something like this from 120 to 300, this is what 120 gives you. You're gonna obliterate the background at 2.8 the quality that you get out of the files from the Z9 with this lens is absolutely fantastic. Uh, so that's really nice. Now in game play from the third base side, it felt like it was a little short in certain situations. Now remember that sports photographers, they love to crop. So they have plenty of cropping ability with the Z9 and this would be a great lens for them because they can go wide and well, wide to 120 and tight to 300 and crop if they need a little bit more, which they tend to need a little bit more because they're always cropping as sports photographers. But we've got this guy rounding second base, making his way over to third. He is nice and sharp. As you zoom in here, I'm at 200 and looks like 280 millimeters. And then the next photo, I continue following him to dive into third base where I'm at 300 millimeters. Now, I don't think I meant to be at 300 millimeters. What I think happened is that I'm used to zooming the other way with the Canon and on the Nikon, it zooms the opposite way. And so I was used to quickly doing it the one way and I ended up zooming in further to 300 instead of pulling back to get him diving, to get the, the third baseman and to get the ball. But we could see that the ball is right there out of focus coming in to the background. And this is cool, like great colors, great tones, great sharpness. And that looks awesome. Next up, I move to the inside third base position, a position I spent a lot of time in this year because I've liked to shoot there after the first couple of innings at the Phillies game. This is a really good spot to get the pitcher. You can get the third baseman. Shortstop is probably a little further away with a 300 millimeter. It may not be enough unless you're going to go ahead and crop, but you can get home plate really good with 120 and you can get the on deck circle as well. Uh, but here's what it looks like at 300 with the pitcher. You can see that the background is totally, absolutely ob obliterated, 302.8. The picture looks fantastic. The clarity, the tones, the edits, they look good. By the way, I did use Skittles for basically all of these images, modified it just a little bit. But this is, a, this is a nice shot because you have a lot of information going on. It's not too loose and it's not overly tight. So we get a lot of detail and information there. Now, inside third base, same side right here at home plate. Now I'm vertical at 260 millimeters. So you can see you can get top to bottom, even if I went to 300, a really nice shot of the batter swinging as long as it's a left-handed batter. So you have a good amount of range right there. To the left of where I'm sitting, you have the opponent's dugout. In this case, it was the Mets and the manager sits right to my left-hand side. Yes, right to my left-hand side. He's over there. So I just stood up, grabbed a shot like this when he stepped up to the top, zoomed into 300 millimeters and it's great. Like I love the details of this image. The, uh, the Z9 crushed it quality wise for this. Still fighting the autofocus a little bit, but that's not going to change very much, you know, until they upgrade it somehow. But really happy with the colors and the tones that I always get from the Nikon. Let me jump in here real quick because I want to show you this photo taken with the 120 to 302.8 and edited with Fropac 3 starting with Zoolander. Then we have Prestige Worldwide. Then we've got November Rain followed by Mount Airy as well as Mentos. We got King Contrast, which looks great, followed by Eckert, Canadian Tuxedo, and Fifth Element. But my all-time favorite with this photo is Skittles from Fropac 1. With one click, bam, that thing looks absolutely incredible. So look, if you're looking to speed up your raw workflow or give yourself a great starting point either on the computer in Lightroom or in Lightroom Mobile, we created 15 custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropack3. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. And if you decide to pick them up right now, they are currently on sale. Or if you want to get Skittles, you can get the Fropack Triple Play Bundle, which includes Fropack 1, 2, and 3, and you can save even more. Now, let's get back to the video.
Now let me show you 120 and 300 from the third base side. This is zoomed into 300 on the Phillies dugout. The next image right here, that's pulled back to 120. Now 120 right here looks kind of amateurish when it comes to a sports photo, but at least it just shows you what the range is that you have. It is a pretty sweet range that when a player is right in front of you right here, this is what you get at 120 as well. So you can get a tight shot. You could zoom in and get a portrait. I mean, we zoom in on his face and it's crystal clear. It's, it's good thing his eyes aren't open because we don't know if the Nikon would have hit his eyes in this situation or not, but it's super sharp. It works out perfectly well. Now, I've been waiting all year where you focus on just one player. In this case, it's gonna be the third baseman where I've been waiting for a diving play. And finally, finally, I got a diving play at third base. I'm all the way out at 300 millimeters. It looks like it could be tighter, but if I was to zoom in on it, something along these lines, get that composition like that, that's what sports shooters would do. That's what they do for uh, Sports Illustrated. That's what they would do for newspapers. That's what they're gonna do for online usage is they're gonna zoom in and they're gonna crop it to make it exactly how they want it to be. But I was was able to get the shot. Not every one of these images was in focus when I banged out the shot. I pressed the shutter down as the ball was hit. He goes diving. He falls out of focus after this frame, but I did get the shot that I wanted. And again, this is a Skittle shot that looked absolutely fantastic. Now, a couple more from this position. These are just more like sports rep reportage type images. You can see that the pitcher is looking out into left field. Why is he looking out into left field, you may be asking? Because he just gave up a dinger. This guy just hit a dinger. He's rounding third base. And this is what you look for with those types of sports photos. It, it, you know, Looking out because he just gave up a home run and then the guy coming around here around third base. You, another shot that you can get where you pull back to 120 is the guy coming down the third base line on his way to home plate as the pitcher is walking away with his head down. That's another type of reportage image that you would want to see with sports. Now, let's finish up these last couple of images at a soccer match. It was the Gotham against Orlando. It's some women's, it's one of the women's leagues. They were playing in Philadelphia where the Philadelphia Union play. And I thought this was a good chance to shoot soccer because soccer, you could shoot with a 600. You could shoot with a 400. You could shoot with a 70 to 200 or even a 24 to 70 when they're up close to you. But I think 120 to 300 is a really solid range. In this in this case, the players are running towards me. I'm at 210 millimeters. Then as they continue to come in my face, I'm at 135 millimeters. And lastly, 120 millimeters. So I was just going through the range. As they were coming closer to me, I'm just shooting, shooting, shooting. They keep getting closer and I keep getting winning shots. And that's something you don't get with a 300 2.8 that's fixed because you get what you get and as they get too close, you have to swap to the 70 to 200 on another camera and you end up just fidgeting and missing a bunch of stuff. That's why 120 to 300 is such a dream, such a dream lens. And then the last shot is just, I thought it was a pretty cool shot with them running towards the sideline, 175 millimeters. This is a really perfect lens for soccer. I also think it worked very well for baseball. And I think on the sideline for basketball, you can do a lot of damage with this and say a 24 to 70 underneath the basket. You can get them coming down the, uh, coming down the floor. You can get the coaches, you can get the fans. This is a solid lens. Unfortunately, it is way too late. It's too many years too late because no one, I mean, almost no one is gonna spend $9,500 for an F mount lens in this day and age. I would like to say, why didn't Nikon reimagine this for mirrorless? Well, the reason probably is they started developing this way before mirrorless ever existed. Uh, and that's why. And I doubt they made a lot of these. But let me put something into perspective for you. Would you spend $9,500 for this one lens, or would you get a 14 to 24, 24 to 70, 70 to 200, and a 51.2Z for $9,700? You can get your entire four lens starter kit, and by starter, I mean like professional starter kit for a Z camera for the same price basically as you can for this one lens. If you can get one of these lenses for like five grand, maybe I would consider picking it up and using it, but this isn't a run and gun lens. This is a lens that you use on the sidelines. It's not a lens that is meant to just run and gun because it's, it's heavy at over seven pounds. But let's see if it passes the wind tunnel test and then we'll see if it passes the sniff test. If it doesn't pass and falls off, I guess Nikon would be upset, but whatever. You can see that's a legitimate blow right there because I'm huffing and puffing and I'm just blowing it really hard. And it's not moving, so it passes the wind tunnel test. 
Let's sniff it. Mm, oh, I got it. Smells like a pair of Yeezys. Overpriced. That's right. Don't come at me. It's true. It's true. Anyway, would you use this lens? I mean, I'm sure you'd use it, but would you buy this lens? Would you spend $9,500 in this generation to buy this? Let me know down below. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. That's where I'm going to leave it. Jared Polenfronosphoto.com. See ya.